Well, the, the, the data, statistically, that is the, the case. The Two data, thirds of those who apply for asylum are granted it, albeit the, after a lengthy the, process the data, in expensive hotels. The data supports the fact that the huge majority of people arriving illegally to our shores are economic migrants who have passed through several other safe countries first. France is not a war zone. They're coming from France, and they come through many countries to get. They're coming to Britain for a better life. Now, if we think it's our duty to give the world a better life economically, we may as well do away with passports, do away with borders, do away with any controls whatsoever. The entire Brexit debate wasn't, I agree with you, wasn't about being anti-immigration at all. Mm. It was about controlling the numbers and the speed of arrival. This, 1,500 in one go onto a village of 750, it's the perfect example of how wrong-headed it is. It's going to treble the population of the village overnight. Yeah, but where overnight. should they go? Because they're here. There is no legal transport method. There is no process for them to come in. Well, the so government what haven't do, got what do any... What you do with these people that are coming in? The government haven't got any ideas for how, how to stop the arrivals in the first place. The French don't want to work with the UK. The French are quite happy to see the back of, the, of, of people leaving their shores. And we can't turn them around in the Channel... Instead, we're ferrying them ashore, and we can see record numbers. 500 came to Dover alone at the weekend on, on ships, border force ships, that are meant to control our borders, but instead act as a taxi service. It's a shambles. I just think and it's the super interesting, because you refer to this kind of illegal migration. The reason that people are making these incredibly dangerous journeys is because we've shut down the vast majority of safe and legal routes. And just to pick you up on that point around in France, flooding from France, very, very few people who enter the EU as migrants actually carry on to the UK. It's about 10%. So the number of migrants and refugees who are hosted in but other that's... European countries massively dwarfs Britain. I think the vast majority of people, like with Ukraine, would recognise that Britain does have a role to play in housing people who are free, no, you're, fleeing you're, persecution. You're comparing and apples I, and pears. One, one is a war zone. Many, That's the Ukraine. many of these people are also fleeing, war, the, fleeing the, war zones. And the, those the, who the ones are, arriving here, the huge majority, are economic migrants. These are the facts. That's and and every, single one, facts, every single one of these, of these people going to Linton on Ouse will be single males. There are no women and children. So how would you feel? If 1,500 men were dumped on your doorstep in a village of 750, how would that make you feel? You would have legitimate concerns to raise a protest about it. That's the point. They weren't consulted, they weren't given a voice, and now they're, they're being told that they're racist I, for objecting. No, I was going to say, this is a big debate, you know, and we just don't have, have any yeah. more time for it, I'm afraid. <laughs> but, but, um, but, but we've uh, got so much to say. Yeah, we've got so much to say. <laughs> just very quickly, Amy, um, because Martin was there, was talking about a story that you picked out of the Times. Do you want to talk about the cost of living, windfall tax, or Wagatha Christie? Oh, gosh, so many choices. Um, I think let's quickly talk about windfall tax and cost of living together. Okay. Um, because I think what well, they're, they're the same story, effectively, right? What we're seeing is government.